to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. Like other almanacs, our aim is to tell you a little bit about our past, our present, and events in the near future. Last week, we heard the first part of Dave Wilson's interview with Joan Maloof, a professor at Salisbury University and expert on old-growth forest. Dave Wilson is former director of the Maryland Coastal Bays Program and co-owner of Conservation Community Consulting. In part two, we begin with a little history. This is Dave Wilson, and I'm talking with Dr. Joan Maloof today about old growth forests and and her old growth forest network, which helps protect and preserve forests uh, nationwide. You know, some of the, the folks I worked with over the years have issues, big issues, trying to restore forests as they were when we got here. So because of the deer browsing, it's really difficult to match the forests that are here and that are mature when you're trying to plant even the same trees because of the deer browsing and the invasive plants. Can you maybe elaborate on the issues with deer browsing? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, helpful I think to take a a little bit more of a historical view. When you think about what our forests on Delmarva were like in the past with many old growth forests and with bears and with bobcats and maybe mountain lions and if we go back far enough wolves were here and the deer were more scarce because of that. The deer were kept in check and then we started clearing the forests and we started hunting those carnivores and trapping them, the predators. And then really giving intense hunting pressure to the deer, whether it was the native people or the early settlers. So the deer started then disappearing too. We reintroduced the deer, but we did not reintroduce the the carnivores. And now we've also created a a checkerboard habitat where there's we plant fields full of food for the deer so now the deer have come back and they are spending a lot of time browsing in the forest some species they like more than others and those species that they really like to eat are in danger and and we don't have as many um returning as wood without deer. So even though I love the deer, they're beautiful animals, I appreciate seeing them, we have an overpopulation of them. So I, I think increased hunting of deer, at least until the carnivores come back, may be the direction we have to go for the health of our forests. Can you maybe talk a little bit about the, the forest quality issue with some forests, you know, Labali pine versus mature uh, deciduous trees, um, really interested in, in having listeners sort of learn a little bit about uh, the difference in diversity in those woods. Mm-hmm. Yes. So just like the word protection, there's protection with quotes and then protection underlined. It's the same thing with forests. It would be much more helpful if we didn't just categorize everything as forests. Because, um, you know, again, you look at the map and you see, or you look at the satellite view and you see all this green and you think, oh, we have plenty of forest around here. You ride down the road, plenty of forest around here. And that is true. There's, we are blessed with a lot of forest here, and it's very important to our economy. But when you, when you know the difference in quality between those production forests, which are primarily pine plantation, as you point out, and younger forests, versus the older forests, then you realize we, we should not even be calling them the same thing. They're completely different organisms. The older forest, the native forest, that's not been controlled through thinning and herbicides and the like, will have many, many more tree species. And it will have many more insect species because of that. The forest in the Old Growth Forest Network for Worcester County, Maryland, is the Kubler Payne Forest in Nassawango Creek Preserve, which overall protects over 10,000 acres of swamp and upland forest along the Nassawango Creek. The Kubler Payne Forest has a trail on it called the Prothonotary Birding Trail, and it's a lovely, gentle stroll through a mature forest that ends up with a waterfront view on the Nassawango Creek. 
The Kubler Payne Forest is 55 acres, and most of it has been cut at least once since European settlers arrived, but it's still one of the oldest forests in the area, and it won't be cut again. We went out there and aged a few of the trees, and there are short-leaf pine there, 144 years old, black oaks close to 150 years old, and white oaks and water oaks and bald cypress close to 200 years old. It's also noted as a, as a breeding site for the prothonotary warbler bird, which has been monitored here for many years. In Dorchester County, the forest in the Old Growth Forest Network is the Lecompte Wildlife Management Area. And this is owned by the state, but they have managed it to allow the forest to mature back into an old growth forest. It's 353 acres, and it's not old growth yet, but the variety of tree species can be quite impressive. Some that actually will make you stop in your tracks include giant willow oaks, loblolly pine, and swamp white oak. Depending on the time of year you go, you may want to wear your rubber boots because this is a low-lying forest. In the summertime, the standing water will mostly be gone and there's a beautiful carpet of moss, but of course that time of year you need to make sure to check for those little creepy crawlies that we have here. This forest is also a refuge for the rare Delmarva fox squirrel. Joan Maloof has written two books on this topic, Teaching the Trees, Lessons from the Forest, and Among the Ancients, Adventures in the Eastern Old Growth Forest. She is working on a third book called The Healthiest Forest, What Science Says About Old Growth Forests. Visit oldgrowthforest.net for more information about these and 46 forests designated as old growth in 14 states. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters, eatdrinkbyart.com, for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune. <laughs>